Hello, I'm Magnus Hitstem for the Developer Show. We're here at the TensorFlow Dev Summit with Andy Sell, who just did a presentation on TensorFlow Lite. So Andy, what is TensorFlow Lite? So TensorFlow Lite is our product for doing fast and small mobile inference on small devices that are resource constrained, like mm. mobile phones. So it's not for training, it's more for inference on a model? Right now it's for inference, but in the future we're going to explore training. Okay, excellent. So what kind of applications can we imagine out there being built on TensorFlow Lite? So there's several Google apps out there today that employ machine intelligence that are switching over to TF Lite or already have switched over. So some examples are Google Photos, The Assistant, and uh, Smart Reply. Hmm. Uh, and you can see more about that if you look at our talk log. Mm -hmm. But one of the great things is that once you make it easy for any developer, not just like a machine learning expert, to run fast inference, uh, app developers are going to transition to being able to put this into every app and use it for applications we can't imagine. Well, how does this actually work on a mobile device that's small and has battery constraints and all of these things? Yeah, so uh, TensorFlow Lite it was architected from the ground up to work on really small devices. So that basically means that we want to keep the binary size small. So when somebody downloads an app, they don't have to wait a long time to do that. Hmm. And also, we want to make sure it's fast. So when they do something, they don't have to wait a long time or that app developers can use it where they otherwise wouldn't be able to because it wouldn't be a good user experience. So once we're fast enough and once we're small enough, every developer can put it into every app and it will allow lots of things. And we frankly can't imagine what apps app developers do. One of the great things is that they're creative and they, they can uh, use it in all sorts of ways. Super cool. And we mostly talked about mobile apps here, but in fact TensorFlow Lite goes way beyond that. We had an important announcement today. Yeah, so for the first time we showed Raspberry Pi. And that's a single, uh, it's a cheap single board computer that uses a cell phone chip, but it basically has allowed schools and allows individuals to afford many uh, like computers to do like robotic applications. It can interface with lots of different hardware. You can plug motors into it. So this is going to be a really good gateway for hobbyists to get into machine learning and running it for uh, like all kinds of interesting applications that are multimodal with device outputs and, and multiple sensors again, because they can put sensors that the you know, the cell phone manufacturer, you get your cell phone, it has one device, or it has, you know, you can't change it. But this, you can plug in whatever you want. And, and it's kind it. of a bridge to the internet of things as well, right? Yeah, exactly. In fact, so it's Raspberry Pi, but it could be any uh, Linux-based sy uh, system on chip computer mm. will work fine with a minor tweak to, say, the make files. Mm -hmm. But TensorFlow Lite is so easy to port that it's it's not really that hard to Super do Super cool. So the question on everyone's mind is, how can I actually get started with TensorFlow Lite if I'm a developer? So this is really easy because it's all on GitHub and uh, the documentation is all on tensorflow.org. So we released this last fall, so it's been there for a while, so you can play with it now. And uh, we're excited to hear all your feedback. We're excited to see what you use it for. We have a mailing list as well now, which is tflight at tensorflow.org, in addition to the GitHub and the website. Super cool. I'm Magnus Hitsten. This is Andy Sell for the Developer Show. We're at the TensorFlow Dev Summit talking about TensorFlow Lite.